So in this example, we want to find out which of the following force fields is conservative. And if one is conservative, we want to find the potential and the work done along the curve parameterized by x equals 2 cosine t, y equals 2 sine t, where t varies between 0 and pi over 2. So let's check in A, so for our f, which we'll write as some vector with components p and q, we have, let's see, y cosine x minus cos y, and we have the sine of x minus x sine y. So my p is here, or my p of x, y, this is my q of x, y. So the criterion that we learned to check this so it would be that the partial on P with respect to Y should equal to the partial on Q with respect to X. And I'll just put a little question mark above it because I'm not so sure if they're equal to each other. So let's take the partial on P with respect to Y. I'll get that the cosine of X, if I take the derivative of this first term, partial on P with respect to Y, and the derivative of the cosine of Y, well, a minus cosine of Y should give me a plus sine y. And that, if it is conservative, I'll put a question mark again, should equal to the partial on q with respect to x. And the partial on q with respect to x, I get the cosine of x minus the sine of y. This was actually pretty tricky in that it may um, have you question um, what you remember about the derivatives of cosines and sines. And you can easily make a sign error in an attempt to uh, show that these are conservative, but the fact is they're not conservative. So this guy is not conservative. So we do not have a conservative force here. Okay, so let's try in part B. We'll check its force. We have x plus y squared and 2xy plus y squared, where this is my p and this is my q. Well, in this example, if I take the partial on p with respect to y, I get 2y. And if I take the partial on q with respect to x, I also get a 2y. So this thing checks out. It's obviously a conservative force field. OK. So we found that B, um, which is conservative, uh, and the thing that we know about a conservative force, since we know it's conservative, we say we want to find a potential in the work done uh, along a certain curve parameterized by these x and y values. So since it is conservative, I know that there must exist a potential whose gradient is equivalent to this force field which says that the PQ value that I have on my force should equal to some partial on phi with respect to x, some partial on phi with respect to y. So if phi x is equal to p, let's go ahead and write it up here. I get that phi x is equal to p, that's x plus y squared. And then I have that phi y is going to equal to my q. It's not like I have two vectors that are equivalent if the components, of course, are equivalent. So phi y must equal to 2xy plus y squared. So if the partial on phi respect to x is x plus y squared, then my function phi of xy according to the phi x, so it's like I'll take a partial integral almost of the uh, right hand side it gives me one half x squared plus x y squared plus some arbitrary function in y um, because remember if I take the derivative of this with respect to x or the partial respect to x and the derivative of this function in y would equal to zero and if we look at the other function uh, the 2xy plus y squared, and we take the partial on the right side, kind of like a partial integral with respect to y, 
then let's see. I should get xy squared from the first term plus a third y cubed plus some arbitrary function in x. So if I look at these two functions, it appears that my phi xy or phi xy um, should contain the xy squared, which is common to both. xy squared, xy squared. Um, the phi xy at the top can accept some arbitrary function in y, and below I have a plus one third y cubed, which fit the bill, of course, it's just a function in y. And below I have some arbitrary function in x. I put two wiggle lines under it. And here the one half x squared should fit the bill. Plus any arbitrary constant, of course, but this is enough for a potential function. And if we take the partial respect to x, I should recover what I have above. And if I take the partial respect to y, I should recover what I have above. So let's go ahead and see now. We found the potential. We can find the work done along the curve parameterized by x equals 2 cosine t, y equals 2 sine t, where t starts at 0 and ends at pi over 2. So um, might look something like this. Where I start here and end here and kind of go around this way. And let's see. So if I'm at 2 cosine t. So at when t is 0, I get 2 times the cosine of 0 for x. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So I get an x coordinate of 2. And the y coordinate, sine of 0, of course, is just 0. And then at pi over 2, the cosine at pi over 2 uh, goes to 0. And then the sine at power 2 is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. So this is the contour that we want to proceed along. So let's see, I want to go from 2, 0 to 0, 2. And let's see. I know that the work, it makes it really easy when we have a conservative force. It's just going to be phi at the end point. So I'll write phi at the end. We see phi at B minus phi at A, or phi at A uh, minus phi at the beginning point. Okay. So let's see. If I calculated this correctly, it's like me writing phi at the end point, which is 0, 2 minus phi at the beginning point. So I began at two, the point 2, 0. And if I evaluate my phi function, I should get 8 thirds minus 2, or 8 thirds minus 6 thirds, which gives me 2 thirds of a joule.